of the farmer who had an abundant harvest and the only thing he could think of to do with that abundance is tear down his old barn and build a bigger one only to find out his life was required of him that very day. So we'll see what that means for us. We, um, it's good to see you here. Uh, we have a number of women at the women's, the Senate Women's Meeting Conference that has been at the Ramada um, Conference Center. But I'm glad to see you. Let us um, prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness. It's on page three of your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing in life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind up our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. Watch this, Nate.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Benevolent God, you are the source, the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is offensive to you, and to treasure what is precious in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
first reading is from Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. I, the teacher, when king over Israel in Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw the deeds that are done under the sun, and see, all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me. And who knows whether they will be wise or foolish. Yet they will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain and their work is a vexation. Even at night their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. reading from Colossians. So, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, 
Then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And he said, and he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What's in your barn? God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? You know, there's not a lot of good news in this text, is there? It talks about a man dying, and guess what? St statistics have indicated so far that every one of us is going to die. Basically, God is saying to the man, I have been generous to you. Have you used what I have given you well? And God says to us, I have been generous to you. Have you used what I have given you? Have you used it well? Another question comes up, what have you idolized? What idols are in your life and in my life? Have you been a good steward? Because we understand that because life is finite, it's going to end, and our stuff will be there after we go, we don't really own it. We can't take it with us. We're just caretakers. My barn. Have I ever shown you this picture? Built it a few years ago in my backyard. Oh, my light doesn't work. Bought it down in Branson from a guy who was uh, uh, evidently moving and he needed to get rid of all kinds of stuff. It was 10 foot wide by 16 foot long. 
When I reconstructed it in the backyard, it was another eight feet longer, so 24 feet long by 10 foot wide, and I added an upstairs. <laughs> and then, after I got all my tools and stuff in there all set up, it wasn't big enough. <laughs> so I added that extension on, on the back side for all lawnmowers and everything else. And it is full. Let me tell you about one thing in the, the shed. About 10 years ago, I kept going over to Ron Fell's house and using his table saw. And finally, Ron says to me, Dan, why don't you take my saw home with you? <laughs> you use it, and I don't. I said, Ron, really? I, I said, why don't you give it to your kids? He goes, they won't use it. Take it. And I did, and now that sits in my shed. Big old heavy craftsman um, table saw. And this past week, I've been having trouble with the motor. It keeps, every time I turn on the saw, it throws a breaker. So I figured the motor's bad, so I brought the motor in. And uh, when I went to pick it up, the older gen gentleman, a good Christian layman, says to me, that is a fine motor. You see, I had been thinking, oh, now's my time to buy a new table saw. <laughs> And he goes, now that is a fine motor. I took it all apart. And he said, if I would have replaced anything, bearing, bushing, or anything, I would have done harm to it. That is a fine motor. You'll never find a motor like that again. And he, he treasured it. He, he acted as though it was a treasure. And I'm going, oh boy, I better be a better steward of that saw than I am. And I said, well, what was the problem then? He said, it's not the motor. That'll be $82. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to be the switch. See, the motor has a switch on it, but it plugs into a switch on the table saw. And that switch was going bad, so I had to fiddle around with that and clean it up, and now it runs like a charm. Ron did the right thing. He knows stewardship. I'm done using this thing. Let me give it to someone who uses it. Now, Ron will never come back and say, Dan, I'd like my saw back. But if he did, I'd expect him to ask me two questions. Did you use it? Did you use it well? Second one would be, you know, it never belonged to you. Can I have it back? Such is with everything in life. I think my battery went dead. Luke, I think my battery went dead. Okay. Our problem is, the man's problem in this text was idolatry. And idolatry gets an abundant harvest. What should I do with it? I'll tear down my barn, build a bigger barn. Isn't that an interesting plan? Just build a bigger barn. And what was his purpose in building a bigger barn? It doesn't sound too bad, right? Let me s store this grain so it doesn't uh, spoil. But he did it for the sole purpose of putting his possessions before God. Because he does some soul talk here. Talks to his soul. 
his psyche, his very self. And he says, soul, I have plenty to take care of me now. I have plenty. I can eat, drink, and be merry. He found comfort and security. Martin Luther, the problem with idolatry is that it is valuing something more than you value God, putting something before God, finding comfort, hope, and security in something other than God. This man idolized his possessions. Martin Luther, by the way, believed that every violation of the Ten Commandments was a first a violation of the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. So every violation of every other commandment becomes a violation, becomes a form of idolatry. You shall not bear false witness. Why would I lie? Because I want something so bad that I'm willing to put it before God and what God wants me to do. Why would I, I steal? Because I have set up something else in my life that is cherished above God. So every behavioral sin winds up being idolatry, some form of idolatry. Tim Keller, among others, uh, this is all over the internet, Dick Kaufman, Dick Keyes, Jack Miller, they've uh, developed uh, four idols, and I'm trying to think if I think all th four of these do cover all the idolatry in our lives. And let's look at them. The first idol is the idol of comfort, then the idol of approval, just think, I want, to be so, I want people to uh, approve of me so much that I act cowardly toward them. I will not tell them the truth in love. The idol of control and the idol of power. All those, I, and I just put those out there because it might be helpful to you. I look at this man, and his idol is that of comfort and security. I have so much that now I can be, I can rest. I can eat, drink, and be merry. I have no worry in the world. And his hope and confidence is not in God. It is in his abundance, in the very gifts God has given him. Christians are not immune. Back in the mid-1950s, Green County, Kentucky, there was an oil boom. Oil was so close to the surface that you could drill down 100 feet and hit oil. A church in that county had five acres of land, 17 oil wells. The proceeds they received from the oil was only one-eighth of the profits, but it still was a considerable sum. So, what do you do when you have that much income as a church? Well, we better have a congregational meeting. And here's the conclusion. Number one, we'll pay off the church debts immediately. Put a tidy sum in the bank. All that sounds very good. But then, we'll divide the remaining money, plus future income among the members. Point three, for the time being, stop taking in new members. <laughs> There's something about money and possessions that can even cause a church to lose sight of its priorities. What is the number one thing that we're supposed to do when it comes to doing something? or even using money. Our number one concern at Messiah has been, how will this help us? How can this help us further our mission? 
And if we don't do that, especially when we talk about money, we are wasting our time. It's about mission. So, is there any help for us? Give. We're supposed to be a generous giving people. God's people are generous giving people. Survey was done and they have found that people who do accumulate wealth and they do not give, they wind up being unhappy and they never seem to be content. So why does Jesus tell us so often to be generous and to give? Because it's good for our souls. It's good for our souls. So give. I know you're saying, oh, he wants me to give just so the church will have enough money. Well, if you can't give to the church, which I do believe is your responsibility to support the church, Find something to give to. Your very soul, your very soul is at stake here. So give. Realize God's abundance. Be thankful, as Dawn sang. Be grateful. Give. And then remember God's gift to us. Just think of the treasure you are about to receive today. You're going to come and sit around this communion rail in the very presence of God, bread and wine, body and blood. The very presence of God is going to be given to you to consume, to be with you, to leave here with, that will give you great comfort and security and confidence in life. Celebrate the presence of God, his gift to us. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
and the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, ascended at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and rising to serve, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Almighty and eternal God, protect us from greed and attachment to worldly things. Grant that we may be rich toward you and share Christ's glory with the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guard your creation against greed and overconsumption. Restore polluted air and waters, protect animal habitats, and send new growth where it is needed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Break down barriers between neighborhoods, peoples, and nations. We remember places that are suffering from racial discord, police killings, and police being killed. And we pray for our troops who are serving elsewhere to protect us. Sustain community leaders, legislators, volunteers, peacemakers, and all who seek the good of their communities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Healing God, give energy and compassion to caregivers. Comfort all in need of healing, especially Meredith Adams, Cindy Anderson, Lael Biella, Carolyn Callan, Larry Carlson, Terry Carlson, Pam Cole, Dean Crane, Lyle and Lucy Dolly, Sandy Drake, Jeff Dykeman, Mark Henson, Ellen Kamens, Tina Law, Ellen Lassant, Carol Lohmeyer, Chris Marquardt, Annabelle Moore, Carolyn Nyes, Kathy Zinter. Are there any others? God of hope, we rejoice in the resurrection. We pray that you comfort those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Inspire our congregation to live in the present moment, O God, and to trust in you. In committee meetings, classrooms, and all ministries, give us flexibility to follow where you lead. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trust in your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. God of mercy and grace. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And with your Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, as acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All that is ready, our Lord invites us. Today we commune via intinction, which means you'll receive the bread, a wafer in your hand, hold on to it until the chalice comes by and dip or intinct it into the chalice. Our Lord invites us, all are welcome, please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. O God, as a mother comforts her child, so you comfort your people, carrying us in your arms and satisfying us with this food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now as your disciples, announcing peace and proclaiming that the reign of God has come near, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The only announcement I have is there is a potluck after the next service, so come. Um, then um, also read your messenger. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace. Remember the poor.